We almost made it the entire time without someone making a uh, homophobic slur in the chat. <laughs> so, uh, it's Friday night, though. <laughs> it's Friday night. Still got a Modern Masters pack to crack. I can pray to God there's a time we're going to make up for the rest of my horrible night opening packs. I don't know, you got the Range Outcast. You play the Range Outcast very, tomorrow? Pretty, a good sack outlet. pretty excited about that. <laughs> So it's the quarterfinals on the left. We got Brad Camp. Brad uh, doesn't usually get to play down here. He usually just here for pre-releases and whatnot. But uh, he and Victor made the trip down from Roan County. Brad, Brad using the 25 degree land tap. He's also very conscious of space. Uh huh. He wants to uh, leave enough room for a foot long sub. Yeah, he's gonna. He can park a small compact car in that uh, board space. Yeah. <laughs> So he is playing a, a Golgari deck that centers around Corpse Jack Menace. Of course, Joseph Deal is playing the mono red deck that we're very used to him playing. Turn one, uh, Foundry Street and is in. 3-1. I would not... I would not fault Brad for just blocking there. I would think about it a lot, actually. <laughs> Especially if he's not going to use that Elvish Mystic for anything. This is a drag magnet or one offense. I know Brad doesn't get to play a lot because, like I said, he lives out where Victor does, and it is a relatively isolated area. So it's very, very, it's very likely that Brad is not familiar with this kind of matchup, and it's not re not realized that blocking that that three life might come back to on him. Joseph at facing out his worst enemy, the third land, <laughs> <laughs> and it's that weird uh, four one and not the Goblin Mountain. If his deck could just draw two lands, so no triggers. Representing a uh, weapon surge or a maca. Oh, there's a trigger. He figured it out. Mm -hmm. So we got two, two, one. Foundry Street denizens. Burn your guy. Get in for one, two, three, four, five. five. Uh, just probably gonna win this one. Uh, is Brad playing uh, Thrag Tusks? Brad might have Golgari Charm. Maybe. It's very good. It would only kill half of Joseph's board, but... Uh, so I don't think he's playing Drag Dust, because Drag Dust does not get plus one, plus one counters. It doesn't. So there we see a Vampire Nighthawk, which is actually a pretty good spot to be in. And Brad does not give a crap. He's just... He this said, I'm, I'm only going to... I'm only going to... Uh, he's got to do something. So the question is, does Joseph have Searing Spear? I know he only plays a couple of them. But he can he can Rubble Belt Mocker or something. Oh, land Searing Spear, Dino Charge, Lethal. So he's just going to serve in here. Now, do you block the... I block the... Uh, board for that one, yeah. yeah. You can just pray he doesn't have Mocker. Mocker. Dino Charge. Oh, Dino Charge, one, three. three. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So he's taking ten, he's going to get two. So up to four. He's down to four. Play Mutavolt. Post combat Mutavolt. Joseph clarifying out there that that's the original one. Brad says, "Hey, you got Mutavolt? Guess what? I do too. Now I lose." <laughs> <laughs> like, what can he ca What can he play here? He's facing down. <laughs> if Joseph plays a red creature. With the current board state, if Brad plays another blocker and Joseph plays a red creature, then Brad loses. Mm -hmm. So Brad is dead to a red creature? Yeah, I think if he had a creature, like he would have played it last turn. He played the Nighthawk last turn. Are you talking about Joseph? Joseph. Yeah. No, I was talking about off the top. This time, uh, Brad's choosing to leave the boys back on defense, but a red creature wins the game. As does a burn spell, as does anything that's not land. Mm. Even Burning Earth puts it basically out of out of. Pump spell works he's, here too. He's got something. Well, I mean, you're not you're not you're going to suicide your guys anyway, so he's dead to a pillar if you draw it or something like that. Oh, well, that's not right. Go down to three. Searing spear. He was dead no matter what. Yeah. That's the old slow rolls, I don't call that one. So Joseph with the slowest of rolls. <laughs> I don't know. Brad could have had instant speed damnation. Lay line of sanctity. 
What is uh, sheltering, sheltering word? Uh, Question in the chat how many players there are tonight. I'm sorry. Um, uh, we got 22 tonight because it's an abnormally low night. Our normal average is like 35. But, uh, all right. Syntax correct. Yep. I guess let me show you. You got something to show me. What is it? Zip. Is it from your pack? Yeah. Well, I opened is it, the Hydra in the pack. Is it crimped? Or texted, miscut? No. I okay. texted Scotty. Uh-huh. I said, hey, I got the Hydra. I said, what, in the pack? I said, no, I traded for it. And here you go. <laughs> this is... This is what I want to... First, I want to uh, archive this so that uh, Scotty can go back and watch it. <laughs> it's very funny. So, a funny story as we as these guys sideboard. So, Jonathan here, half of the Wright Brother tandem. A classic story from amongst our play group is when we went to Star City, Cincinnati. And Jonathan sold to Bonfire the Dams for entry fee. For entry fee, but then made $100 by finishing, what, like 16th in the tournament or something like that? Okay. So, he cashed. And then afterwards, on the way home, when we were eating at the Outback, he told his brother over text, Yeah, I, I did this, but I sold to Bonfires. And Scotty said, No, Jonathan, you did it. With all exclamation points. And then, did you take his phone and just reply with hash, yeah, I told him. hashtag YOLO? <laughs> Which was funny because um, <laughs> Scott, uh, Jonathan says, Got the Hydra. Hydra in a pack? No, traded. Why? Because I wanted it, lol. What did you trade? Two geists. <laughs> what the fuck? Why? Stop. You better be kidding. So now I'm going to respond with hashtag YOLO. <laughs> How do I get assembles? Uh, go, you got go it. My... Oh, no. Oh, here, here, here. Hashtag? No, no, no. Use the... I got it. Oh. <laughs> now I'm on the hashtag. Now you click it again. There you go, right there. Hashtag. Don't worry, guys. I'm a professional engineer. I'm a technical professional. This is a would you say I want to build elves, or would you say I want to build elves? How would you say that if you're texting? If you're gonna say I want to build elves, would you? I'm trying. To build elves. I'm trying. I decided to build elves. <laughs> that, no, say that elf deck. That'll get it. Look how cool this foil is. Just from afar. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, that's promo. <laughs> this is more fun than anything we've done on the stream tonight. I apologize, it's not been one of the better streams we've ever had, but they can't all be miraculous. That was also the Applebee's that Max was hit on by the Witchers. So Applebee's are Outback. Oh no, that's a very legitimate thing. So Max Turner, like, <laughs> we're leaving the Outback. We, we walked in there, to be fair, with eight people five minutes before they were closed. Yes. I felt awful, but like, I was also in, I was in, like, starving. And then, but we did order a ton of food, and I left her a big tip. Yes. But on the way out, like, Max is running behind, because we'd all, like, gone to the restroom and stuff, and Max comes out later, and he's like, yeah, so, uh, just got propositioned. So basically the waitress was like, so what are you guys doing now? It's like, oh, we're heading home. Oh, you're not staying in town? Oh, no. And she's like, you're not staying at the hotel? Yeah, it's like, oh, that's a shame. <laughs> she was throwing it on him. Like, before we left, she was even... I mean, she was Winking at Max a little bit. Mm-hmm. She wasn't going to win any... She was, oh, and I'll say this too, she wasn't going to win the Blue Ribbon, but she wasn't coming in last place either. No, no. Not at all. <laughs> Jonathan stayed. <laughs> Jonathan, I, can't pass, I can't pass this up, guys. YOLO. <laughs> Your brother thinks you traded away two guys to St. John for some <laughs> random big green dumb animal. <laughs> Did Joseph mold down the six here? Black, white, and smoke. This is probably, this is probably very dangerous to do. No. This is. <laughs> Did you not want to enter that first chat? Seem legit. All right, so Joseph drew a mountain and a one drop, so he's good to go. Is there ever a hand that Joseph can mull with a mountain? 
I guess it's like three. It's like if it's like two, 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 I think he only plays two Dino Charge. He hates that card. Right, it's supposed to be like Weapon Search now, isn't it? No, it was always Dino Charge, but I mean, he just hates that effect. Mm -hmm. Strangle Root guys. Brad don't give two craps. He's getting in there for two. Best blocker, arguably best blocker in standard. I think, uh, we've talked about this before, but I think the best blocker in my entire cube is Porcelain Legionnaire, yes. which is also the best aggressive creature in the cube. <laughs> so play two guys, get in for three of my Foundry Street gens, and so basically the nut start from, uh, from Joseph, both games, and even this game, on a mole to six on the draw. So Brad already facing down three creatures. I always got to eat a guys now. Huh? I always got to eat a guys now. That's just how you can trade with them. Chlorine Hydra for two of them. <laughs> what did he just put on there? Is that a Rancor on that thing? Um, That's a very... I'm going to go there and look. No, no, no. It has to be because he dropped down to 14. But Brad has some very interesting card placement strategies. Mm -hmm. First of all, no card will make it past the 33% mark from right. left to right on the map. It not come... Across the line, which is the right hand. We're using the 30 to 40 degree angle tap for all permanents. Joseph going to say, get some, get in there. Joseph wins this race, right? Uncle Gary Charm. Oh, Tim Blade. That's just as good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Technically, Joseph would, had tapped his mana to do that, but I, he's still going to do it anyway. So, Brad down to ten. Jordan, loud as all get out. Was this a surprise? No, it's not. It's, it was surprising that it was not loud. Corpse Jack Menace, which is the namesake of the deck. You can't afford to not attack, so get in there for four. Now it's interesting, because if it ever dies, the guy comes back as a... As a 4-3. Yeah, 4-3. That's fun. I want him to play. This, this also just makes me miss Mega Burger, because this is her deck, too. It's like Joseph, yeah. too. Uh, for, for any uh, question in the chat, the players tonight, Brad made it in at 3-1, and Joseph was undefeated. He drew in the final round. So three zero oh, and one. Who else is in the top eight? We've got uh, Chad Watson on junk tokens against Justin Carpenter Justin playing Naya. Michael on tokens. Troy. Michael with black white humans against a Troy playing Bant hexproof, and then who's the other one? Skibby. No. Skibby versus no Skibby. Brian Gross versus Brian, Brian Gross versus Drew. Yeah, I think Brian might win that one. If he does, we'll play him on camera next. He's playing Mono Green. Mono Green Ramp. Okay. With New Garrick into Crater Hoof. Yeah, I'm on board. So we're getting in here with everybody. <laughs> Lightning Ball. I that he Garrick's is a Crater fan because I told him about my Crater Hoof story. He's like, how much money does that cost? <laughs> oh, he's not paying. He's not hard casting it. So we're going to Pillar of Flame here to finish off the Corpse Jack? Absolutely we are. It's in his graveyard, but removed from game. It, well, they fixed it. It won't matter. I don't think. Uh, Brad. This is. I mean, this is. Maybe. Good point. Just if uh, seeing how uh, Brad's deck operates, because Pillar of Flame, a creature that's not Stranger Root Guys, or Stranger Root Guys is on the border, wearing a Rancor. <laughs> mm hmm. And there is the uh, Primordial Hydra. X is two. X is three on this one. So 3-3 three, three is going to be a 6-6 six, six next turn. But more importantly... Yeah, otherwise it would have been a 6-6. Six, six, and a 12-12, twelve, twelve, and he would just die the next turn. Because after 10, it's uh, trample, it right? 18-18. Oh, yeah. Six, yes. Joseph draws a Searing Spear. And now he can trade with the front half of that to Strangle Root Geist and get in 2 damage if he wants to. I mean, you know Brad is just going to... Brad didn't play a land last turn. You know he's just going to untap and play another 5-drop. Right, maybe he did Maybe he did play a land last turn. I just missed it. Another Corpse Jack. That's helping. Ooh. Very aggressive here. Dropping Jordan to... Or, um, 
Well, Jordan doesn't draw from me. Uh, or Joseph. We turn. both called him Jordan. Uh, he can attack next turn and force blocks. Mm -hmm. So what wins in the game here? Diamond Charge does not. Searing Spear puts him at one. He'd need to go Lightning Mauler into another guy, and even that I don't think is good enough. Uh, some Burning Tree Chain might work. I'm sure if you had Burning Tree, though, you would have already played that. Burning Tree, Spear you. Uh, that might be work. So you just attack here. If he attacks here, Joseph can just take it, though. No, Joseph's at 6. Joseph's at 10? No, Joseph is at 6. Did he not? They, they didn't adjust the light bulbs. You actually adjusted it on your screen. Oh. I'm better than they are. <laughs> Alright, so Brad, Brad, uh, Brad shows him Putrefy, right, to take out one of the blockers, and then uh, then we're good to go. Yep. Oh, is it one off? Brad did. Brad did. Get in there with his Corpse Jack deck. Get in there with his Corpse Jack deck. Huh? Is it the first game or the second game? Second game. Okay. Jo Joseph won the first, first one, one probably before you got in here. Yeah. Because you, there was two minutes between the time the round started and you coming in here, so Joseph had already won. Yeah. <laughs> he did overload a Dino Charge for three creatures on turn three. Yes. That yeah. usually that usually results in you winning the game two turns later. Why is Jordan so loud? I do love how that the, the same number, of, the same kind of personalities that enjoy coming to the card store and playing Magic, are the same kind of personalities that, like, as soon as like someone says something, like they just either consciously or subconsciously, the volumes just start. It's like a feedback loop, you know. It's like you make a noise, and I gotta make a noise. Before you know it, I've lost my mind. You coming tomorrow? Are you? I'm playing that thing tomorrow. You are still. So. Yeah, I think. We, I are think. Still, are you still borrowing stuff from John? Oh no, I'm not. That's. I, I gave up on that one time. I think we're talking about if we can amass the cards, I might play some kind of omniscience. I'm gonna play the elf deck. Huh? I'm gonna play the elf deck. I don't have the elf deck. If there was just... If there was... <laughs> I do need two guys, though. Do you have any? If there was just, like... If I could just come in tomorrow and there was just a table with every deck in standard just in a box, and I'd be like, hmm, pick this one? That would, then I would maybe play something, but, like... What would you pick? Junk. If I was going to play, like, a real deck, I'd play Jun. Well, then why don't we just build Jun tonight? Because I don't, I don't have Jun. I have no cards. I have Voice of Resurgence. Do you between need that? You want to trade that for two guys? Brandon and I were talking about it. I think between the two of us, you're missing three Thraktos. Alright. Uh-oh. Yeah, I don't, want, I don't want you guys have to spend, like, all night putting together a it's, deck. It's right in my pants. It's right in my pants. <laughs> And that's been that'll be all for us tonight. <laughs> yeah, reaching the grid. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lord. Lord. Are the cards you were? I might. Play John Warren. Yeah. Hey, so for those of you faithful viewers that waited till the end, uh, maybe I don't know if anyone cares because Dr. Butt Guy in the chat is just really dominating things and everyone is talking off court. I but I did. I would like to casually announce that I am currently in the process of discussing with. Uh, both uh, Tendra, who came up with our stream logo, and the folks over at Ink Playmats, and I think by the end of the month you will be able to order stream stream themed playmats off their website. Then something they sent me in the mail. It's a little dice bag with my logo on it. Yeah, it's awesome. It is neat. They just sent that to me. They're trying to um, roll that out as a new product for that you can get customized, and they just want some feedback on it. The inside is awesome. Yeah, it's a very high quality. Yeah. So we're back into uh, game three here with Joseph on the play. That's obviously a huge advantage for him Does in this he situation. Have another Does it all turn on? Yeah. Jeez. We're gonna have two more one drops. We're gonna have Krinko's command here. Oh, he's got an emissary. Uh, so Brad adds a Slitherhead on board. Now Slitherhead will get in front of the. Slitherhead is one block. Yeah. He's baby. I was born to block. <laughs> I think I can get the he old. Can also attack for one though. Get the boss in there. Burning Trimissary into Rakdos Cackler. Rancor? Oh. Just block it. Oh, come on, Brad. What's that slither head going to do? Just block something later? I might have a Rancor. I might have two Rancors. Races but are. you're not... No. Durs. Durs. If he gets a Dino Tartar, it's huge. Whiff. 
Which like is he, then immutable he only has like five, 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 five. He probably has eight non-creature spells in his deck. Right. Yeah. Two spears, three pillar of flame, or four pillar of flame, two dino charge. Yeah, eight. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I don't agree with the bringing. Oh of no. Dress. So so much for yeah. trading with the uh, yeah, Slitherhead no. because now Legion Loyalist is going to make that him. But if he had. Down a charge there, it would have been. Uh, yeah, just block a two. One, two, three, four, five. And he's still taking another one off of the trample, right? Oh, do they have trample? Yeah, yes. They get first strike and trample? The reason Loyalist is a crappy card unless its effect is good. So I put that out there. Well, but I mean, like, there's not a better one drop to be casting than the Stromkirk Noble, and even that has its drawbacks. Rakdos Cackler's the best one drop in, in this archetype, I think. In this archetype, yes. In this archetype, like, I mean, it's like Young Wolf sees play in certain decks. Before combat, Cackler to trigger the Denizen, 9, and then Rebel Belt Maka 1, that's 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's 12 damage. A Doom Blade would save him. A Doom Blade on the uh, Mocked guy. The hand. <laughs> Victor's just. Victor's giving. <laughs> oh, he's talking about the duress. Victor's giving them grief for bringing in duress. Because that's what your buddy who just got rolled needs. <laughs> it's for you to give him grief. <laughs> I'm angry about the decision you made. 